So, um, hi everyone, welcome to this Q&A session for module number three here. And we're in week number three. We're going to be going through a lot of questions that's come over email and anyone from the live session as well. If you want to ask your question, please raise your hand on GoToWebinar. There's going to be a button that looks like a hand. You click on it. And what I will do is I'll unmute you, and then you can ask a question to Neil himself, uh, you know, and go over it with him. So that's awesome. So uh, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the questions that have come through email and Facebook to start with, and then once that's done, we're going to go through the session where the live attendees can ask questions. So uh, the first question is, um, how important are headlines to a blog post for it to rank? So two out of t or eight out of ten people will read your headline. Two out of ten people will read the rest of the blog post. Uh, the reason the headline is important is it is what will determine how many links you get, social shares you get, how many people keep coming back. It's all about the headlines. I know that sucks, but it's true. The sad part is, is in many cases, I see people sharing blog posts without even reading them, just purely based on the headline. And the point I'm trying to make is it's all the headline. Think of it this way. When you do a Google search for anything, and a lot of the results that rank at the top are content. Which one are you going to click on? You're probably going to click on the one that's really appealing and has an amazing headline. That's the power of headlines. Right? It affects everything. It's not just, hey, this headline's cool, and yeah, I like it, so that way other people are like, well, if no one's clicking on your headlines, you're not going to get Google rankings. People aren't reading your content. It's not showing user signals from the Chrome browsers that, hey, Google, this right here, this article, a lot of people are reading it, so we should start ranking it higher and faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, what is the highest uh, performing headline you've ever seen, like CTR-wise, on the search engine, the results pages? Oh, I've had headlines all the way up to like 20%, 30%, and these are non-brand ones. So if it's your name, a lot of cases you'll get 60%, 70 80%. It's very rare to get 100%. But for non-branded ones, which is so this one. terms in the headline or headlines that are ranking for keywords that aren't your brand. So my brand would be Neil Patel. So if everyone Googled Neil Patel, I would expect the click-through rate to be amazingly high, right? Because it's like, it's my name. On the flip side, if someone searched for the keyword SEO, I'm not going to get 20% click-through rate because there's just people are looking for information. Mm hmm I see. It's and like, even if you guys Google the word Facebook, when you want to go to Facebook, you're probably going to click on Facebook.com. Mm -hmm. It's like it's what you're looking for when you Google it. That's why brand terms have such high click-through rates. Awesome. So uh, from your perspective, what is the biggest tip you would give someone to write the perfect headline that would get the most CTR? Yeah. Um, few things. I try to evoke curiosity. So, um, if you can actually, can, can you share my screen? Yeah, of course. One moment. I thought it was possible. There we go. All right. Okay, right here. 30, 30 science back benefit, health benefits of green tea. Number six is wow. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's evoking curiosity. I see. Right? Mm -hmm. That's a really good, awesome example right there. Uh huh. Another headline that is really good is basic, like what is, like definition based headlines for complicated keywords. So let's say I type in SEO. Uh, what is SEO? Best example, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. Another one is you, dumbing things down. So SEO mm -hmm. made simple. If you have complicated topics, by making it simple, or like, you know that book, uh, whatever for dummies, riding a bike for dummies, mathematics for dummies, calculus for dummies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By simplifying awesome. complicated things down, that helps a lot too. Uh, the other thing is use adjectives within your headlines. 
you know, like effortless, like that's an example of an adjective. Using those yeah. keywords at, or adjectives within your headlines, it helps with click-throughs as well. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Neil. Okay, next question is, what are your thoughts about mobile SEO and mobile content marketing versus desktop? So is there a difference there? How do you see it? So you're saying what's the difference between mobile marketing and desktop marketing, right? Yeah, when it comes to content marketing. Oh, okay, I was saying, like, for what perspective, like, in context? In, in content context market, to, uh, yeah, it, in context to, like, traffic and so on, just Yeah, it's consistent. There really is no difference. Just make sure your website is responsive. And I'll show you what I mean by this. You guys can still see my screen, correct? Yes, yes, of course. All right, let's go to a blog post. Here's my being my mm responsive. -hmm. Okay, you see this design? Yes. Mm -hmm. Desktop. You see how I'm scrunching it down? Image size is changing. Tablet version, right? Like this is like a tablet version. It then goes even smaller and smaller for mobile. You see? Awesome. Yes. Yes, I do. That's what I mean. Make sure your design is responsive and you'll be good to go for content marketing for both mobile and desktop. Awesome. Okay, that is good. Um, next question I would say is in terms of getting that happening, what will be the simplest way? I know we talked about AMP pages in the last module. What will be the simplest way for us to optimize a website, a whole website that has hundreds of pages for mobile? You'd say, no? Yeah. Well, if you have a WordPress site, just hire a developer, make a responsive theme, or there's plugins that you can just say like responsive or AMP. Um, this web page is AMP compatible as well. So if I go AMP, this is a Google AMP version. Mm. You see, see it? Yes, yes, I do. So, which okay. works well. Awesome. Makes perfect sense right there. <laughs> okay, I'm learning stuff. I didn't know about that. That is pretty amazing. Next question from... Um, and the way I do AMP is... Mm -hmm. There's a plugin. I'll tell you which one I use. Okay. I'm just loading it up. <laughs> the plugin's just called AMP. <laughs> awesome. Okay, sounds good. And then that is epic. So that plugin is free as well, right? No? Yeah, that's why WordPress is free as well. Awesome. Okay. So that means I can move on to the next question, which is, what is your perspective on local SEO, national SEO, and global SEO in terms of how hard it is to rank for these keywords? And for like building it, what's the difference or the level of effort it requires to build like a local SEO campaign and a content marketing campaign versus like a national one versus like a global like international campaign? Global of effort hours. Global and international is the same. It makes no difference. But global is the, I mean, local is the easiest. The rest are the same. So if I you see. pretty much rank, you know, globally or nationally, you can rank globally. Um, but local is, of course, the same because you compete with less people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So from, from your perspective, how hard is it to rank for that? Like just level of effort, say, one out of ten, one would be local. Uh, how hard is it to rank for like international terms and so on? Just level of effort required from the person doing it. Local is pretty easy. It's like at a scale of like two or three, and you should get results within a few months. Mm -hmm. Global takes time. It can be anywhere from six months to a year, and it's a scale of like five to ten, depending on the keyword. Awesome. Okay. That is... Cool and great, actually. Um, next question, I think uh, we have a participant. He has a question, which is, um, 
uh, Joseph, you can also mute, unmute your mic if you want to talk to Neil personally, but um, it seems you have a text question, so we'll go ahead and ask that one, which is, can you recommend a few WordPress templates that work the best? I think they are in the stages of get, just getting started, so yeah. Uh, no, are you still with us? I'm here. Yeah, so the question was, um, can you recommend a few WordPress templates that work the best? Uh, it seems Joseph is just getting started with his blog, and he's uh, wondering what WordPress templates you would recommend to get started with. <laughs> Okay, so I would do the basic like default WordPress template as something that you should never use. And then from there, any one that you like. And here's the thing, everyone's always like, what's the best templates, which one should I start off with? Nothing really matters. Once you have traffic, you can then figure out how to fine tune the template, the design, all that stuff. Yeah, so Until then, it doesn't matter what you're using. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see. Okay. You can use the basic ugliest WordPress theme and it really makes no difference. And I learned that the hard way. Okay. That is great. Um, next question is actually from uh, Jim, who actually is helping with the course. And one of his questions was, do we need a, a schema? And do we need like breadcrumbs installed as well? So how would both of those work in essence like together? And what are their functions and what separates them? Yeah. So, um, so schema and breadcrumbs, like uh, I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure on the technical definition, but when mm -hmm. I do schema markup, I'm including breadcrumbs and everything like that. Oh, I see. Okay. So, you need it all to do really well. For example, I have schema markup even on my AMP pages. You can't see it, but Google can. Uh -huh. I and see. Schema tool within Google search. Where is it? Oh my God, finding it. Mm. In Excel, it's search appearance, structured data, right? You can see it's picking it up, breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs and schema. You see it? Yes, yes, I do. So they're counting it. It, it goes together. I see. So it's kind of working hand in hand together, pretty much. Yes. You see this? AMP. Mm-hmm. It, Google shows you all the errors too, which is kind of cool. I see. Okay. So like, it, it'll even show you issues. Amp URL, canonical. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, prohibited from fixing. It shows you invalid, remove the prohibited HTML tags, yada, 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 right? So. Mm -hmm. That is perfect. Um, okay, on the same heels of the that, we have a question from Joseph. He's asking, please provide the top must-have WordPress plugins, the ones that you use on an everyday basis. Top must-have used WordPress plugins? Let me just show you the plugins I have that I love. Okay, that's perfect. Akismet, I am thinking about upgrading to the paid version of Akismet. It's kind of expensive, $5 a month for a website. <laughs> but we have so many spam issues that yeah. I, I think, you know, it's worth it and we don't really have any choice, or at least I hope, you know, eventually we can figure it out without having to spend the money. Um, but Akismet, it's a must-have. Okay. Uh, the next 
plugin is AMP. I think that's great because you know making your site mobile friendly helps with traffic. Breadcrumb schema, right? Like breadcrumbs is really important. Um, comments not replied to. This is awesome because it shows you all the comments that you have that aren't replied to. You want to make sure you reply to every single comment that comes in on your blog. Um, let's see. Hello bar for WordPress. Amazing for email collection. Minify mm -hmm. HTML. This makes my website load faster. Awesome. Vault press. I love backing up my site. And that's mainly it. Yoast SEO. A great SEO tool. Mm -hmm. That is pretty epic. Um, are there any any ones that you use specifically for like sorting through the content or helping it rank higher? Except for any um, such as like auto correction or any of those things, like just helps with um, just making sure the content's proofread and so on. No, I don't use that. But what I like doing for my content when I already have it and I'm trying to make mm -hmm. sure it rank high. Is I pick the page, you know, um, let's see. Uh, what well, one, make sure there's no issues. I already know these are all going to say HTTPS issues. Like, watch this. See, HTTPS, canonical, simple issues there. Um, but more so, I go through, and you should always check this stuff, right? So, if you're trying to rank your pages, and let's say I'm trying to rank all my AMP pages, mm -hmm. so here's my AMP URL. AMP is our Google is slow. So here's this canonical. I bet you if I look at my source code, it's all correct. So view source. Canonical. You see this? Link rel canonical. HTTPS. What mm -hmm. are they here? They're showing that canonical is non HTTPS. So like little simple things which are easy to get fixed over time. Mm -hmm. But Google Search Console is slow. So one, make sure you have the errors and you fix it for every page that you want to rank. It doesn't matter if you have WordPress or not. Now, this is really easy, especially if you're WordPress. I go to search, search analytics. I okay. then click from, from queries, I click to pages. I'll select the pages, like this one. I don't know why there was a huge drop, but yeah, it happens. Mm -hmm. It's taking them to load up. <laughs> yeah, what's funny is I just forgot. I got to go create the HTTPS version of each and every single site, which sucks. I see. I just switched to HTTPS. Awesome. Okay. And then you want to make sure that um, all these keywords, you see them? Clicks, impressions, etc. They're all included in your keywords for your posts. So then I would go into my WordPress and I would consider adding them. But what I do is I click on impressions, CTR, position, uh -huh. and then I add them in. So like this one's already 1.7. This one, real Instagram followers. Click the rate is high, but my ranking position isn't as high. So I would want to work on adding these keywords within there. Um, how to get Instagram followers, you know, I may want to end up putting that keyword more in my copy to increase my CTR as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that I do awesome. that. And then after I update the post, I then go into crawl, fetches Google, and then I put in the URL here, and then I request them to fetch. So then that way it gets indexed right away. Awesome. Okay, <laughs> that is pretty That's epic. That's what I do my WordPress sites to make sure. I mean, my WordPress content to make sure it ranks and gets the most amount of traffic. Now, when I publish a post, I wait typically three to six months before I do this. Hmm. I see. So, um, how often is it safe to change a post or update a post and then have Google fetch it? You'd say. Every time I update a post, I do that. Okay. Um, one more thing is uh, the next question that I got is 
what is your perspective on sites like Huffington Post, Forbes, um, all these sites that publish like hundreds of times a day and how they're doing it versus how we're teaching people to do it in SEOU and what would you say is the difference there for them? Well, having them post and all those people, their, their model is just crank out a shitload of content, whatever happens, happens. That model works if you have a lot of money. Think about Huffington Post. Do you know how much money they had? Huffington Post crunch base. Let's see how much money they raised. I think it was like at least 50 million bucks. 37, close enough. It was a lot of money. 2 uh -huh. million, 5, then 5, then 25, and then undisclosed amount. So the point I'm trying to make is when you raise a lot of money, you can do whatever. You don't raise as much money, you can't do whatever. And my strategy works really well if you haven't raised a lot of money. So like even Business Insider, $55 million, right? You look at BuzzFeed. All the companies that get traffic, $443 million, right? Um, they all have raised a ton of money, and the point I'm trying to make is, yeah, these guys don't have to do this stuff because they just crank out new content because they have so much cash. If you had a lot of cash, I would say do whatever you want, but this is not the case for most of us. I see what you mean. That is pretty epic. Um, okay, that is awesome. Okay, um, Carlos, you had said that you had a question that you wanted to ask Neil. Uh, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. So, Neil, I noticed that on your website, you have those huge pages with lots and lots of images. And usually with those... Lots and lots of what? Images. Okay. Yeah. Here's the thing. When I load your blog posts, I notice that the images, they don't load immediately, right? So I suppose you use some sort of lazy load plugin or something like this. Could you walk us, us through this? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find the name of the plugin. But yeah, we do have something like lady, lazy load images, and that helps with uh, load time and speed. I I don't yeah, know what it's at, called. Yeah, it's I'm looking at a blog post here. It's just so big, and it loads in 1.7 seconds, which is pretty epic. Yeah. So what I do, this is what Carlos is talking about. So let me go to. You see how these images aren't loading up, like. I, you see how these images are just loading up? It's because it sees I'm scrolling, so as I scroll, then it loads images. I can show you on a blog post page as well. You see that's loading up? Hmm? You see that image loading up? So based on how far I'm going down, that's when it loads. That works so well. That's great. I'm gonna get this plugin. <laughs> but yeah, lady, lazy load should do the trick. My social sharing counts are all messed up because I just switched to HTTPS. Although I don't have the padlock because one of the JavaScripts I have to put on my site isn't HTTPS compatible yet, so I have to fix that too. It's funny, everyone says if you switch to HTTPS, and you use Google AMP pages, you get so much more search traffic. I'm gonna to prove to you that's a huge myth. And I've known this, I switched to HTTPS because Google stated that, hey, if you have email forms, we're gonna make it show like it's not secure. Um, acquisition, campaigns. See, my traffic's flat. 21,000, 20,000. Yesterday, 19,000. Normal Wednesday, 19,994, 19,47. Wednesday before that, 19,5, right? So you're seeing the rough numbers. This is just search traffic. Uh, and then I can even go look at mobile, audience, technology, mobile, overview.
Uh, I'm trying to see where it says technology. So whatever the most popular is, I'm assuming Chrome Mobile. Android Web Viewer. I think Android Web Viewer is mobile. But yeah, like it's not really increasing. The point I'm trying to make is just because you do these things and you do these switches, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a boost in traffic. It's the stuff we're teaching you in SEO Unlock that really helps. And it's you have to do a lot of them and combine them to get the results. But it works. Everyone thinks that you just do one trick and you get the big boost in search traffic. That's not how it works. I wish it did. If that was the case, you know, I'd be on Cloud9. I'd be at 10 million visitors a month. And mm -hmm. it's tough, right? Like, look at me. I'm in the SEO landscape. I'm at... Today's the end of the month. I'm at 793, so I'll hit over 800,000 unique visitors, which isn't too bad, you know, and 1.3 million visits, uh, 800,000 unique by the end of today. That's pretty Paper awesome. Is bad. Two, six. Time on site, 1.35. Bounce rate, 35%. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, on the heels of that, one question from me, right? So this goes way back, you know, like 2015, you know, when we started first working together on stuff. Um, I noticed I had analytics access to this. Novatel.com was only getting about 5,000 visitors a month or something like that. When did we start? 2, I don't know, a while ago. Uh, so, yeah, let's say July 2015. I have no idea. 80,000 yeah. back then, uniques. Let's do January 2015. 23,000. Yeah, 2014 is when it was lower, but yeah, you guys get the point. It takes a while to increase traffic, but it's worth it. Like, look at this. From January 2015, 23,000 unique visitors. It's not too shabby. January 2000. 2016, 181,000. January 2017, 800 and yeah, 828,000. And then look at me now. I'm roughly back to where I was in January. But keep in mind, a lot of that traffic in January was paid advertising. I'm guessing a lot of my traffic was to neilpatel.com slash acquisition, campaigns, behavior, site content, all pages. FB, 76,000 here, and then I was also doing YouTube as well. Paid ads. Uh -huh. So both those paid ads, I was, you were probably looking at 100,000 plus visits a month. But still, right? It, it, it's slow and steady, but over time you see big leaps and bounds and increases. Um, if you just even look at Google traffic, here's January. And January is a good month for me because that's when everyone's looking to do like new marketing and stuff like that. 449, right? 449 visits from Google. Mm -hmm. And then if I go into August, I guess it's around 500, 538. So my Google traffic's growing. By the end of the year, I'll probably be around seven, eight hundred thousand visits from Google. Mhm. Mm That's pretty epic. Um, one more thing um, that we were wondering was, and this is going to be maybe covered in the next week, you know, in terms of content. But I think it'll be a good prelude for the next week, which is, uh, what is your perspective and how? What do you think about tools versus content in terms of? how it is because tools also get a lot of traffic for example uh, I think you were talking to Dan about this in the past where you know Bankrate gets so much traffic just from tools versus uh, their content and so on so yeah you, what would you say it's like crazy so check this out mm -hmm. my most popular page is my SEO analyzer yeah you can't count the home page the main <laughs> blog page but the the tool the SEO tool which is the third one, beats out any blog post by more than double. All right? Check this mm -hmm. out. 
Uber suggests, which is another tool I own, and I'm going to end up putting it on neilpatel.com, so my traffic should go up by another 100,000 visits and 200,000 page views. All right, so it's all one page site mainly, but if I look at the the data, 106,000 unique visitors, 176. This is a keyword tool, right? And I'm going to end up adding this on neilpatel.com. Um, let's see so you guys can see it. And as you can see here, tools drive a ton of traffic. And I think once I make this really good and I put in the time and energy and money, like I think I can end up making this Uber Suggest site getting up to like three, four 400,000 visits a month. Okay. Um, that is awesome. So, um, Neil, from your perspective, so this was a site that was acquired, and we're going to talk about this next week a little bit more, but from a perspective of building a tool for yourself, just putting on your site, what would you say the cost would be to kind of build a tool like Uber Suggest? Not this robust or complex, but just a basic tool. Yeah, um, you can usually, I, I wouldn't even build it. So here's another thing I can end up showing you that I think you guys will like. So whatever space you are, there's a chance that there's already a tool within your space. So let's say I want to create an SEO tool. I would do an SEO tool scripts. A to Z SEO tools by, I don't even know how to say their name. See, I can buy this, and now I can add an SEO tools on my website. So maybe they have screenshots. Let me go item details. A to Z SEO tools. Oh, that is awesome. You see this? Plagiarism checker, your IP address, blacklist mm -hmm. look up. This is actually those... dashboard. Active SEO tools. This is actually pretty cool. That is Man. pretty awesome. Yeah, you should have bought this. It's only seventeen bucks too, so that's pretty awesome. It's thirty nine dollars, but still, it's yeah. pretty cheap. Thirty nine. Yeah. Okay. Still a lot of. It's still a good deal, right? <laughs> yeah, it's still a big deal. Like you can go live preview. I'm like, let's check out this tool. The point I'm trying to make is like you don't have to create the shit. You can just like buy plugins that do it all for you. Mm -hmm. Keyword density checker. Let's try a blog post to see if this thing even works. Total keywords. Okay, it's off. I have more than 53 keywords on that page. But you guys get the point. There's probably other tools out there that are free that really do work. Yep, for 39 bucks, that's definitely something. Yeah, my site where it doesn't work, but let's try putting Microsoft.com. There you go, many more keywords. So yeah, it's not bad. It's free, or technically thirty-nine dollars, but this is a good deal. So mm -hmm. why not create tons of tools like this and just release them all for free? How would you promote a tool like this if you were to get it? You'd say, yeah. Put it on Twitter. Put it on the local sites like uh, inbound.org. Put it on the local forums in my site. And there's usually like inbound.org for every vertical out there. And then from there, it just naturally gets more and more volume over time. Awesome. Okay. That is pretty cool. Um, that's pretty much all the questions that came through Facebook and email. I'm going to do one more announcement. So if you have any questions whatsoever as an attendee, raise your hand. Or you can ask it on the questions box and we'll pretty much go from there. Uh, I think one question just came through now which is from Joseph. Joseph, uh, the best thing is your question is a little bit complex so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unmute your mic and you can ask us directly. Is that good I would say? 
Yes, let us do that. Joseph, you are now unmuted. You can ask us any question that you have. Hey, Neil, I have a solid business plan and a model. What are the top three things I should focus on to get started? So, for example, trying to decide who to hire for my WordPress blog or should I just start building it? I've got a list of blog posts ready to go, and I've got a couple of companies that I'm looking up to that are, that are getting a ton of traffic in my niche. Okay, what's your niche? Credit card processing. Are you competing with Stripe or are you doing something else? <clears throat> so uh, credit card uh, comparison. So I've actually got a patent on um, comparing credit card processing rates. So think of a lending tree, but for credit card processing. Cool. I got it. So you're pretty much just trying to be an educational site and then drive people and you make your affiliate fee. Correct. Okay. So number one, create the WordPress site. If you don't have a WordPress site, you can go hire someone from 99designs to design you something, get it up, and then go from there. Number two, blog on really informational and detailed content in your space. For example, I'll type in Stripe reviews, and I bet you there's a ton of people reviewing Stripe. So Stripe reviews 2017. Putting the date in there is really important. And then change it each year. And make it more thorough than this. Make it easier to read than this. Make it easier to see visually what it is, what you get. But like you see how this is tons of text? The text is fine, but where's the thoroughness? You get what I mean? Like it, it, it doesn't show me much about Stripe. Like okay. it has text. Where's the images? You get what I mean? Like I do. how hard Stripe is to use if you're an engineer. Here's how Stripe is hard to use if you're a business owner setting it up. You see how like they're not covering all angles of it? Got it. Okay. This is my main competitor right here. If you do, um, if you look them up, I mean, they're they've got a lot of traffic. How big are they, company size wise? <clears throat> you know, I'm not sure. Um, as far as employee size or revenue, don't know that either. Okay, so number three, guest posts. Um, and what I mean by guest posting is there's a lot of websites in your space that just have financial, business, entrepreneur advice. You can be writing articles like 11 ways to cut costs with your online business. And one of them could be switch processors. And you can like link to an article that breaks down the cheapest reviews on your website, right? Like which one is the cheapest and there's maybe a table format and it shows all the options out there. Those are the three things I would do. Thank you. That is pretty epic. Uh, Joseph, is there any other follow-up to that question you'd say? Because I see you're asking a bunch of questions on the chat, so I just want to make sure. No, no follow up. I just um, thank you for kind of top three things. I, I I need to get started on it. I'm back into the business. I've been out for a little while. These guys have blown up in my space, and I need to take them over. So. Okay, that's awesome. And you can't uh, anything special. Say that one more time. You can take them over. They're not doing anything special. No. Got it. Thank you. Awesome. So with that said, Neil, um, there is no other questions as of now. Um, I'm waiting in. There is no other questions right now. So apart from that, uh, is there anything you'd like to say, like closing remarks, since I think it's time to close yeah, the session? So just anytime you guys have questions, feel free to hit us up. We're here to help and uh, appreciate everything, right? Like we really want to see you guys succeed. So don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Like seriously, bug us as, you know, anytime you have questions, it's not really bugging. So. Awesome. Thank you, Neil, for attending this session. Thank you, everyone, for coming. So we're going to close the session out. We're going to have a notification sent over on Friday evening about the times for the next weeks. We're probably aiming for Tuesdays and Thursdays because it seems to be the times that work well. 
and uh, yeah, we'll probably let you know by email. And looking forward to having everyone on on the next call. That said, we'll talk to you all soon. Bye for now.